free, 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 free stuff. Yes. Hey everybody, today you're going to get a few tips on how to get the most from your motorcycle trip. Yes, and you're getting these tips from the pros. Oh yeah. Welcome to Boost and G's Riders, I'm Rich. I'm Kate. You know, over the years we have taken extreme long motorcycle bikations. Yes, we have. So we think we're going to bring you some tips on, especially if it's your first time going, and for you veterans, help us out in the comment section on these tips. Right. We're going to try to keep it relatively short, but you definitely want to pay attention. There's going to be some very, very good information. So we're going to dive into oh, the yeah. first one right now. And that first one is get a good night's rest. Yes. The night before or that week, you're probably all anxious and excited about because that road trip is coming up. Mm -hmm. But make sure you get some rest the night before so that... <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I mean I can't fight that. I'm the one who who get anxious and really can't get a good night's rest. Yeah, and, and just because I'm ready to go, and we've been taking some long ones. We got another long one coming up this year. So oh yeah. So anyway, and moving right along on the next tip is have a light breakfast. Yes, by light breakfast we don't mean anything like just toast and coffee. Right. You want something that's going to fill you up but not have you overstuffed and all lethargic when you're riding. The reason you want some breakfast is so you get that energy in you when you're riding your first couple of hours. You don't want to have to stop half hour because you're hungry, you're tired, you didn't get any rest the night before. You just want to have a nice breakfast to get that energy in you so you can keep going. Right. Yes. Right. So, so no grits and bacon and not no big lumberjack right. meal. But you want something light. Which brings us to our next tip. You want to leave at motorcycle time. And what do we mean about motorcycle time? Leave early. Leave early. Leave about motorcycle time is about five, four, five o'clock in the morning. Especially in the summertime, you want to leave early because you want to beat that summer heat yes. that's probably waiting on you mm -hmm. along on your route. You know, once that sun get up to 12, 1 o'clock, that's where all the heat comes in. And by the time 12 or noon, I mean 12 o'clock or 1 o'clock get here, you're pretty much finished with your riding. You beat. And that way, you'll, you'll be all right. Yeah, so take advantage of the cooler weather in the summer and leave early. Early, the cooler morning weather. The next tip would be know your mileage limits. Oh, yeah. So what we're talking about knowing your mileage limit is basically, even for your new people who haven't done it, and it's not about planning. This is about the planning is done. The planning is over. Your trip is ready to go. You, you're just ready to get on that trip. The planning don't have anything to do with it. Right. But in your planning stage, hopefully if you're new to this, you know your mile limits. You went out a couple of miles and came back, coming back, and you know, okay, I can only ride 300 miles. And that's the limit you should be riding because you go past that, you might get yourself in trouble. Right. And you know your body. Listen to your body. If you pass your your mileage limits, if you set 300, don't go 301. <laughs> no. Listen to your body and stop. Yes. Because the brain knows when it's tired, you're going to get sleepy, and you want it, You need to just stop. Yeah, it becomes a danger. Right. And then move on to the next one is, don't book your hotel room or your camp space so far out to where you have you have to go past your mileage limits. You don't want to do that. Yes, and, and what we mean by that is actually we know some of you are real extreme planners and want to book your day by day by day by day. Right. But let's do this. What happens when and like I say, you don't heard probably heard us say some of this stuff before. We just want to reiterate this stuff so you can actually have the most out of your vacation. But what happens if you're out all day, you're mm -hmm. having a great time, and then you look at the watch and go, oh, snap, we got another 200 miles to go. And you got that hotel or that campground that you had to pay for. You might consider that a loss because, like Cake said, listen to your body and stop and rest when you need to stop. Right. So don't book about too far out. So if, One, you, go ahead. if you can't make it to your hotel location because you've reached your limit or you have not reached your limit take that loss people take, yes take that loss on on that hotel room 
Well, one of the things we do, we actually named it, we call it sundowners. Right. We'll ride until we start seeing the sun starting to set. Now, we don't really let it go all the way down and ride in the dark. I mean, we've done it many times, but we don't do that intentionally. Mm -hmm. So we do a sundowners. We're out having a good time. We're just going, you know, just riding along and going, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, we don't have a place for the night. It's not start setting. We book us a place and stop us from worrying about booking so far out and have to ride a long distance. Exactly. Now, sometimes we go from point A to B, but that just happens, you know, and that, that just it's going to happen on anybody trip, but try not to book too far out. Yes. Which brings us to our next tip. And that is when you decide to stop for the next, that particular night, don't stop in the big city. Stop past the big city. Yes. Yeah, stop past it because if you stop inside the big city, what's going to happen when you, it's time for you to leave? You're going to run into a bunch of traffic, that commuter traffic. So that, that way now you need to find out which way is the commuter traffic going? Right. And then you want to go in past that city to get past the big commuter traffic in, in, within the city. Yeah. And if you think, <laughs> if you oh, think yeah. for one moment that, nah, Rich and Cake, I just ride the back roads. Now, we ride the back roads as much as anybody else. If you think you're going to ride the back roads to get around the commuter traffic. Guess what? Everybody else that's in that city and has been living there forever, going there to work, they know the back roads always. Also, right. So we, don't think somebody is following you because you got off the freeway or you taking that back road. No, yes. they going to work, so they are going to take the back road too to avoid their commuter traffic. Yes, we live in Oakland, San Francisco, San Jose Bay Area. That's the three big cities in the area we live. Right. And when I was working in Oakland, where we live, is thirty maybe forty five minutes tops to get to Oakland. Yes. And I would get off saying, okay, I'm going to take the back roads. <laughs> so did 300,000 other people got off taking the back roads also. Right. So you got to make sure that when you're going to stop for the night, book, if you're going to book, obviously, past that city. Mm -hmm. If you book past that city, then when you get up the next morning, like Cake said, you don't have to worry about You don't any of have the, to worry about a thing. The commute traffic. Go past that, that big city. So moving on to the next tip is, Enjoy the early arrivals. What oh, do you think? definitely. <laughs> early arrivals. Who are we talking about? I'm going to give a couple of examples also. If you arrive early somewhere, let's say you do book a room and you're getting there early before check-in time, enjoy that area. Oh. Don't just stop and wait from in front of the hotel. Go out, grab you something to eat, maybe take a movie. Just enjoy the area, the scenery. Talk to the locals around there. Yeah, we do it all the time. If we arrive early, we're going to go and check out a park or just go hang out in the park. Yeah, we, I, a lot of so times we, we hang out in the park and just yes. put a blanket down and just wait till it's time to check in. Even at check-in time, you check in, the tech, most check-in times at 2.30, 3 o'clock. 3 o'clock, right. I don't want to be in a room for the rest of the night, 2.30, 3 o'clock, just because I had a ride. But here's the second thing. If you got that good night's sleep, mm -hmm. like the first one we talked about, you know your mild limit, you know all these things. If you book, the next thing is only 100, maybe let's say 200 miles away, and you know you're going to stop at that location, 200 miles, you can go, wow, we only have 200 miles to ride today. We're going to get there quick. You can do a couple of things. Sleep in late. Mm -hmm. Or hang out late. Or <laughs> just leave early during motorcycle hours. Now you're on a road, we're talking about motorcycle hours around 7 o'clock. You leave motorcycle hours and you get to that next location, like 150, 200 miles, super, super early, that's the best time to find out what's going on in that city and enjoy oh, those yeah. early arrivals. I mean, there's nothing like it. I mean, we, we, when we were out riding with uh, Willie and Melody, Melody, yes. during 2020, during the height of the pandemic, we rode, we was riding Route 66, coming Come back on. the opposite way, coming home, and we were on the bikes that particular day for about 12 hours <laughs> and we went less listen to me less than 100 miles because we was enjoying our day right we got up early we knew we was going to go to wherever we was going to go and we didn't book no rooms so we was just stopping and enjoying every, everything on Route 66 seeing stuff stopping at this location that location we and stopped at Uranus yes and we hung out in Uranus the whole time anyway because of the... Well, we stayed there about the, an hour. 
We the stayed most. there a long time. It got dark. And then we decided, okay, let's go get us a room. But throughout that day, we had stopped at the bridges. We stopped at people, talking to people. I mean, just had a fantastic time. And we enjoyed the day because right. we left early that morning. Okay, we're going to move on to the next tip. And that is one of our favorite four-letter words. Our favorite four-letter word, and it starts with an F. And it ends with an E. What is it? Free, 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 free. Free, 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 free. Free, 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 free. stuff. Yes. So take advantage of free stuff, which right. we're talking about things like. The movies. Uh-huh. In the city or town that you stay in. First of all, check that city or town event calendar. You're going to run up on a movie night. Right. Concert in the park. Yes. Free museum night. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. See how close uh, you are to a national park because. Some nights are free. Some days are free. And, and so good, if you're in that area, don't forget, just check the calendar. And a good thing free. about the, the movies in the park, the free movies and concerts in the park, they are family friendly. You right. go there, you're going to see families with their lawn chairs there. Just pull your bike up, sit in the back, enjoy those days. When we was in uh, Maryland. Maryland, that big yes. one in Maryland yes. where the Ferris wheel is. Yes. When we was we actually Harbor, had a Harbor, what's Harbor something? Harbor, Harbor. I know. When we was there with with uh, Erica, and Seven Two. Yeah. And then we was there with Bronco Ride. They had the big movie screen playing, so we could have stood there all night and watch a movie. Exactly. Absolutely free. Yes, it is. And there. before we move on to the next tip, national parks, <laughs> monuments, things like that. Take advantage of the national park. And you probably heard us say this before. Get mm-hmm. a national park pass. pass. Even if you think you're not going to use it that much, it lasts for an entire year. And if you're in the military, it's free. I got my or military pass. If you're a veteran, yes, yes. it's absolutely it's free. free. And the seniors, you old people, or us old people, I'm not you old. old people I'm not a senior out yet. there, We're you not can get you a lifetime senior pass to the national parks. Yes, so take advantage of that. And even every single year, there are free national park days if you decide not to get a national park right. pass and you're out on your vacation, check your calendar Let's to find out what those national park days are. The national park pass runs about 80 bucks. Yes. And it costs each person to get into the national park about 35 bucks. If you go in separately, it's if per it's, car if you're in a car. Per car, no, but which I'm, what I'm saying is if you by yourself and you don't have a national park and you got a group with you, it's going to cost you $35 Average. on your motorcycle Yes. to get in the national park. So it's best to just go ahead on and buy the national pass, park pass, and use it. Or go to that same park twice, over and over again, however many times if you're closer to, close to it. Yeah, don't rush to it. Right. I mean, we... we just, just you got to go out there, and this is about enjoying that vacation, exactly. getting the most out of it. And one of the things to do to get the most out of vacation is just start meeting people. Meet people. This, this you, is you must meet people out there. There are so many nice people out there, and this is not a time to be an introvert. Uh, no, it's not. It's not because remember that one time we were staying in. No, we wasn't staying in Dumfries, but we well, were I know in you Dumfries. About then. Yes. Yeah, we was in Virginia. We, we stayed, were in we, Virginia. We camped at um, Prince Prince William Forest Park in there Virginia. You go. That's how I remember. There you go. And we went this out like on the back ago. road. We went out on the back road. We was going to get something to eat, but on our way back to the to the campsite, we were leaving the restaurant and. I noticed a crowd of people over so, in dumb fries, dumb freeze. I don't know how you pronounce, you it. pronounce it. And I asked Rich, I said, "Well, we missing over that today. We missing yep. something. Yep. Let's make a U-turn." So we made the U-turn and we went over there, and all these people would gather around yep. this little shack, the ice cream shack. Yeah, I, I don't remember the name yum, of yum, it. Yum. If I find no. it, I'm gonna put it on the screen. I don't remember the name. Yummy of something, it, something. But. It was their ice cream social, the community ice cream social. So we got to meet people that were other bikers Wait, we, there. We, when we got there, we saw a couple of cars. So I, literally, I thought right. it was a car show. 
And then once we pulled all the way around, that's when we saw the bikers. Exactly. So we went and parked over there by the bikers. And we were the only two gold wings there no, of around a bunch of Harleys. They had a couple other the bikes bunch. there, but mostly Harleys. And you know what happened. Come on, It was the Harley gold wing <laughs> debate. <laughs> Winner! <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so it, 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 we found out, if I remember correctly, it was... It was 50% off ice cream that night. I think so. I think and then so. we went out, we, we got in line, went to go pay for our ice cream, and what happened? Somebody paid for our ice cream that night. The guy that we were just having a conversation yeah. with said, no, we got you. We have. We'll, pay for we'll our ice cream. It. You're visiting our state, so we're going to take care of it. Yeah, they, they, we, they we talked about with some California. What are you guys doing out here? We da, da, da. And they took care of our ice cream. I had a banana royal. And, and you I had, had a banana split. And we just had a good time. Yes, and yes, even yes. after that, we wind up getting back to the camp way later than we thought, just enjoying time, enjoying people, enjoying conversation, just having a great time. Which brings us to our next, our this this not the last. We got two more, so bear with us. It's the second to last. This one is very very important. It's kind of like what you would do with all the things that we cover. Slow down. down. You're on vacation. Right. We don't mean slow down and go below the speed limit while you're on the freeway or on the road anywhere. Our slow down is get off your bike, smell the coffee, smell the roses, dip your foot into the water. <laughs> you know, you hope <laughs> you're laughing. What you laughing Because I'm thinking about when we, we was in Canada, when you say, right. touch the water, Rich, or something you were saying like yeah. that. Rich, touch the water. <laughs> Dip your foot in the water. Get off a smell of roses. Yeah, uh, just, just get slow down. And, You're on and vacation. Slow down. If you had a week vacation, plan it to where you don't have to rush, so you could slow it down. Which goes back to one of the ones that we we talked about early. If you leave early in the day, right, then you can actually take your time. Especially if you have a short period from getting from, from A to B is very short, like under two hundred miles. That's the time you were to slow down. Instead of rushing exactly. to get there early, slow down, enjoy your vacation. You know, if you got a, a week vacation, maybe take two weeks off and say, okay, I have two weeks off. I'm going to take a week for vacation just in case anything comes up. You don't have to worry about being trapped out there and make, not making it back for work. Right. So that's what we mean by slowing it slow down. Slow it down. So we're going to come into the final tip. Mm-hmm. And that is bike security. Yes. You want to secure your bike. Bike security is, is very, very important. And this is why we saved it for last. It's very, very important. And you know what they say about bike security? Out of sight, out of mind. Yes, out yes. of sight, out of mind. We have bike covers. I have a full bike cover. And I have a half. Bike, and he have a half. I don't so, use it as much as I should, but like she said, out of sight. Right. Out of mind. And some of the other things you can do with bike security is what we do if we get in the room. When we're in campgrounds, it really doesn't matter that much. Because we're right because there we can by see the bike. It. But when we get a room, we always try to request a room on the ground floor so we can be right there if anything has happened to our bike. Now, if yeah. somebody tampering with the bike or look like they're trying to steal it, we'll make noise. We're not going to just approach them and put ourselves in danger, but we're not just going to let anybody just take our bike. Right. And another, another thing you, that you can do is what we do. We try not to park directly in front of our door if we're on the ground floor. We try to park between two doors or between two windows. So if somebody watching it, they have no idea which room we're coming out of. Right. So keep that in mind when you're securing that bike. Or you can bring your bike in your room. I tried to bring Jet Blue in the room, <laughs> but um, you big know, monster. go away. It was just too big for us. Couldn't go through the door, but that's okay. <laughs> for those that ride those small bikes, Bring your bike in your room with you. Well, we've seen, it, that we've seen it with, with Monkey on. Butt. If you guys don't know who Monkey Butt Rise is, we'll put a link so you can check out his channel. But yes. we see him and other people put their bikes in their room. You're not going to damage anything. You can fit in there. Why not? Right. Also, the mileage bullet, she put her her bike inside of her room at one time because she was in the area that was known for stealing sports bikes. Oh, wow. And she put, she put her bike in her room and... It was secure. It was Next thing home. is, if you don't have one, there's all kind of bikes alarms that you can use. Like, yes, I have, have a portable. They sell portable bike alarms. I have one, and it fits on the rotor of my bike. 
and I attach it on there. If you try to move my bike, it's gonna sound, and it is a loud yes. sound. Very, very it comes loud. with a cord that you can put it up on your handlebar, so that way you you won't forget that that alarm is on there. And start your bike up and try to ride. Although even if you start it up, you move your handlebar, it's gonna it's gonna sound, so you'll know it's there. But you don't want to have to go through all of that. And I also sometimes thread it through Rich Bike. So now both bikes are protected, even though he has an alarm on his bike already. Well, security. The security. The poo -poo. <laughs> that well, got no alarm on that locking thing. it up. <laughs> anyway, so we know that we can go on and on and on so you can get the most out of your vacation. Right. just want to throw some stuff out here, especially if you're planning and you're ready to take your first vacation. For those of you out there who've been doing this, for ages and ride like we ride all over country continuously again and again. And make sure you put something in the comment section so you can help out the new people who plan on doing their long vacation and going out there and enjoying that road trip of this beautiful, beautiful country that we have. It is gorgeous. Yes. So that's all we have for right now. Make sure you go to and subscribe to the channel and hit that like button. We definitely want you to do that and make sure you ring that notification bell so when we put up more videos, you'll be notified when Boosie Jeans Riders put up more videos. Exactly. But if y'all riding, remember, ride long, ride hard, ride strong, and most importantly, ride safe. From Boosie Jeans Riders, I'm Rich. And I'm Cake. And we out. Peace. Peace. And that's Nikisha. <laughs>